Hello and welcome to this iShare video. In this video, we'll explain to you how to get an access token. And to do so, we'll also explain certificates, JSON web tokens, and client assertions, and how they are used in iShare. There are four steps towards getting an access token. First, you need to understand what a certificate is and how it is used in iShare. Then you need to understand what a JSON web token is, how you can create one, and how you can use a certificate to sign the JSON web token. Then you need to know what a client assertion is and how it's used in iShare to prove your identity. And last, you need to understand then how to get an access token using that client assertion. If you already understand any of these topics, you can skip ahead to the part that's unclear to you. For those familiar with OAuth 2.0, this process will be very familiar because iShares authentication is based on that protocol. Let's start with a certificate. A certificate is a digital file that proves the ownership of some public key. The certificate itself provides information of this owner. And usually such a certificate is issued by a certificate authority. The certificate authority has verified this information about the owner. The keys used in the certificate will be used to sign or encrypt other files, but we'll get to that later. In general, there's a lot to tell about certificates and how they are used in a public key infrastructure. Here, we'll only give a short summary. For more information, you can check out our cheat sheet at the developer portal. So, a certificate consists of a public and a private part. The public part holds the owner of the information and the public key in there and is usually signed by a certificate authority. For example, a point serve file is usually the public part of a certificate. And you can find examples of these on our developer portal as well. The private part of a certificate holds a private key, which is associated to the public key very heavily, as we will see a bit later on. It's important that the private key of a certificate is always a secret only known to the owner of the certificate. If the private part of a certificate is known, then the certificate is basically useless. So a full certificate would have both the public and the private part and should only be owned by the owner of the certificate. An example of these is a P12 file. And such a file is usually password protected. iShare uses these PKI certificates to verify identities, where PKI stands for the public key infrastructure. In general, such a certificate is thus a digital file used to sign or encrypt other files. It will contain both a private key and a public key, and it is part of some public key infrastructure, for example, PKI override or EIDAS. In iShare, we will use two parts of this certificate mostly. You will need, for the rest of this video, the X5C value, which is a string of letters representing the public part of the certificate, and we can use that to verify signing and identity, and the P12 file containing both the public and the private part. We can use this part to sign messages and to provide integrity and authenticity for our messages. And this part is usually password protected. So how does the signing and encryption work? Let's say we have some data or file, then we can use an algorithm and a private key to sign this data or file. For example, the RSA algorithm will need the data and the private key, and it will turn out the data with a signature at the end. Now remember that this private key belongs to a certificate of which the owner is known. Now let's say you receive this signed data or file, then you can verify using the algorithm and the public key that this document was indeed signed by the private key. In such a way, you can verify that the document was sent by somebody who owns the private key and you can use the public part of the certificate to verify its identity. We then get to part two, JSON web tokens. JSON web tokens are used when we want to send a JSON object with a signature, 
so that we can provide the integrity and authenticity of the JSON object we were sending. JSON Web Tokens are basically Base64 encoded JSON objects. A basic JSON Web Token consists of three Base64 encoded strings, joined together by a dot. The first string is what we call the header, and it describes the content of the JSON Web Token, or more specifically the algorithm used to sign the JSON Web Token, and also how the payload will look. The payload contains the JSON object that we actually want to send. For example, we could send the name iShare, and we could send when it is issued. And lastly, we have the signature that will prove to the receiver that we were the ones that sent it, and that the data that is sent is not altered in between. So, the input will be first two JSON objects, and then we all need to add a signature. And the first two inputs are actually just encoded to base64 strings. And you can see the output on the right. And you can try this yourself by decoding the strings on the right, and you will see that they turn out to be the strings on the left. And then the signature is based on that output. And it takes some algorithm defined in the header, where we now defined RSA SHA-256. And as input, it will take first the output of number one. It will add a dot. It will then take the output of number two. And it will sign that using the private key of a certificate. And then the output will again be a base64 encoded string. And this is the JSON Web Token. If we, if we glue these three outputs together with a dot, like we will do here, that will form the total JSON Web Token. You can send this JSON Web Token to others, and they can decode the first and second part, and that will show them the information that you want to send them, and they can verify that you were the one that sent this message by verifying the signature with the public part of your certificate. So now that we understand certificates and JSON Web Tokens, we can discuss the client assertion. A client assertion is nothing more than a very specific JSON Web Token used to prove your identity to another party in iShare. So, in iShare, we prescribe a very specific format for the header and the payload of a JSON Web Token. Let's first discuss the header. The header has three values. The ALG field, the TIP field, and the X5C field. The ALG field must be RS256 in iShare. But that's the only algorithm that we support for signing JSON Web Tokens. The tip must be JSON Web Token, as that's the token that we will be sending. And the X5C value is that long value that we discussed in certificates, which is actually the public part of the certificate that will be signing this JSON Web Token. In this case, I took the X5C value of the party ABC Trucking. Then we come to the payload. The payload will be the essential part that will prove your identity to the other party, which is the receiver. So, the issuer value is, will be your AORI number. Here I took ABC Trucking's AORI number. And sub should always equal issuer. JTI is an identifier of the JSON Web Token. It needs to be some string so that you can uniquely identify the JSON Web Token. You then specify the time of issuing the JSON Web Token in seconds. This is in Unix time. And most often that should equal the not before time. The expiry time of the JSON Web Token should be the issued time plus 30 seconds so that the client assertion is valid for the receiver for 30 seconds. This improves the security by minimizing the chances of a leaked client assertion. And then you add the audience which is the party's AORI number for who the client assertion is intended. Here we use Warehouse 13. So, to summarize, here we have a client assertion that is issued by ABC Trucking to prove his identity to Warehouse 13. Now to prove that ABC Trucking is actually the one that wrote this client assertion, but specifically this header and payload, he will sign this using his own private key. 
warehouse 13 will then be able to use the X5C value to verify that part. So ABC Trucking signs this using the private key with the algorithm RSA SHA256, and that creates the client assertion. We will have the header base64 encoded, adjoined by a dot, and then the payload base64 encoded, and then adjoined by a dot will add the signature that is created by the RSA SHA256 algorithm. So we see that we have a client assertion that is signed by that private key, in this case of ABC Trucking. And we will use this client assertion to send it to RS13, who can then verify that indeed ABC Trucking is the one sending this client assertion. So how will we send the client assertion? That's where we use the token endpoint. And here are we getting the access token. Every iShare party that exposes services has a token endpoint you can get an access token for the service it provides. You will need to use the client assertion as one of the values in the token request so that the receiver of that request knows who is doing the token request. So what are the values in the body of a token request? There are five values. Grant type, scope, client ID, client assertion type, and client assertion where we should enter the value of the JSON web token we created earlier. Grant type must be equal to client credentials, scope must be equal to iShare, and client ID must be equal to your AORI number, which would, should be the same as the AORI number you use for IS in the client assertion. Here we used ABC Trucking's AORI number. The client assertion type needs to be equal to that long string that you see over here. And then the last value is the client assertion, which is that long string that we created earlier, which proves your identity and is signed by your private key. Using this, the service provider can verify your identity. It can check at the schema owner if you are a valid iShare party. And if that's all the case, then it will respond to you with a 200 OK and an access token, which will expire most often in an hour, and a token type, which is bearer. And you can use that access token to consume services at that service provider. In a different video, we show the use of these access tokens and the services within iShare. And that's it. That's how you get an access token in iShare, using first certificates to sign a JSON web token, and then to create a very specific JSON web token called the client assertion, which you use to retrieve an access token. If you have any other questions, be sure to ask them on the community forum at forum.isharewords.org. Thank you.